Hello everyone and welcome to JB's Total Gaming look at the app for Brass, a uh, fantastic and complex board game about the Industrial Revolution. So if you're not familiar with the board game itself, um, this game does have a tutorial. However, I will say I would recommend checking out um, Rado Runs Through and his playthrough of the game, whatever. This is a complicated game and I don't necessarily recommend it to people who aren't familiar with the game at all. So what does the game have to offer? It has online play. Um, I don't tend to do online play, but from my understanding, it's similar to like play that games where you basically choose how long you want the game to be. There is uh, offline play, so we're going to go ahead and set up a new game or replace our save game. It does save your game, which is fantastic. My first knock on the game, if I want to play a three-player game, green goes away and I can't swap out and play as green. That is a bummer. So I can play with uh, multiple human players or computer players or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and be purple. Green is my color, though. I'm kind of disappointed by that. So that's a minor grape. So let's go ahead and get into a new game. So I'm not going to do a full playthrough of the game or whatever. I'm not even really going to be paying attention to what I'm doing in the game. I'm just going to be talking about if the game is done well. So first fantastic thing, I'm gonna go ahead and show animations here. So you can see what the computer is doing and what actions they're taking. However, you can choose to skip animation. So the first round of the game, if you're familiar with the game, you take one action, whatever, and they're gonna take the upgrade action. So that's all fine and dandy. But if at any point you just wanna let them do their thing and then you can kind of see what they did, I can skip animations and then bam it's my turn so even though this is kind of a long game especially for an app once you kind of get used to it, it you know you can just kind of skip your opponent's animations and also you can go into the game log and see what they did so here's the thing about this game it looks a little bit different than the base board game overall it, it, but it's still very similar I like what they did with the art style some people wanted it to look exactly like the board game Personally, like I said, I, I kind of like the look of it. It's similar to the board game, but I think, you, you know, it, it's, it's pretty nice as well. All the information you want is at your fingertips. There's the coal market. There's the iron market. Here is the cotton market. Here are my cards. If I tap on a card that's a city, it takes me to the city. If I tap to a place where I can build a port, it'll cycle through to places where I can build a port. Fantastic. I can look at my technologies very simply. So I can see I have three level one here and if I want to you know get to level two cotton mills and you know I need to get through three of them by building them or upgrading or whatever all of that's there the options that I can't do right now are grayed out so all the actions to build to build canals to ship cotton all that are available down here if I you know they're grayed out if I can't do it if I go to a build action all of the places I can build are automatically highlighted so you know I can't build this in Liverpool right now now, normally you could, and in this game you, you can do it as well, where you discard two cards to build anywhere, but you can't do that in the first round because you only play one card. But um, it is, it's, it's great that it shows you where you can go. It, and, you know, based on what cards you have, and those are all highlighted. Also, let's say I want to do an upgrade action. And then I change my mind. There's an undo button, ladies and gentlemen. App developers out there, every board game should have an undo button. Now, there's two actions each round, and after I complete an action, I can't go back and do it. But let's say I go all the way through the process. Let's say I want to build. Let's say I want to build a port. I'm going to build it here so that other people can ship there easily. I go ahead and I can close it or I can click on it. Once I click on it, I get to choose which card I want to use. If I have the city card and the port card, then it would, you know, I get to choose that option. This is the only one I can choose. It's the only one that's highlighted. I will play it, and there, I've discarded card. Now, at this point, I can still hit X and just reset that action and go back to the beginning, or I can complete the turn. Every game should have this. I'll draw my card. I'll see what it is, and then we'll see. Now, basically, I'm, I'm going to be going last because I spent the most money last turn, and we'll go ahead and show animations. But again, it will... It basically gives you everything you need. One of the only downfalls is I can't go and look at my opponent's technologies and see where they're at. That to gamers who really want to game this and think about those things, that might be something they're kind of annoyed by. So then it will show you how much money. So if I again, if I skip animations, it'll show me how much money they spent, and I can always look at the log and look at the state of the board. So any information that I might want, as far as you know, the income track, the scores, and all of that. It's all available to me. I can. It's not really cluttering the board, but it's there at a fingertips glance 
if I want to check it out. Anything I can do is highlighted. So if I pick canals, I choose what card I want to discard. So let's go ahead and discard this. And then it will show me where um, I can build canals down here. It will also, you see, show me how many potential points it will be worth it, uh, by the end of the round. Because you want your canals to be connected to buildings that have completed or whatever. So again, a really nice update. So I don't know, let's go ahead and, oh, sorry about that. I need to recharge this pretty soon and build a canal there. So again, I can still cancel this or I can spend three, build it and approve that's my action and then move on to my second action. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish out my turn. Um, yeah, this may not be ideal or anything, but yeah, let's go ahead and put a cotton mill down there. Maybe, so I get to choose. I, I, I can build either one of these there. I'll pick cotton mill. I will, I can either discard the Manchester or yeah, since we're gonna build one in the city, I'll go ahead and discard the Manchester. Maybe I wanna build a cotton mill later. So again, I'm not really thinking about whether or not I'm making smart decisions, but I'm set up to maybe ship next turn if I want to. So overall, what do I think about the game? Like I said, there are maybe uh, you know, a few little negatives. I can't play green in a three-player game, and I can't see my opponent's technologies in, in, unless they're upgrading, or I want to look at... Uh, so, yeah, there, there's a display for the shipping to the foreign market with cotton. But overall, if you are familiar with this game, which it is a fantastic game, I have not done a review for it yet, maybe I should. It's really neat to have you, how you have to rely on other players. But again, I, I, I'm not here really to review the board game. I'm here to review the app. Basically, what I want, what I want to let you know is that all the information you need is readily available. There is an undo button. If this is a game you like, for the $6.99, I have to say, this is overall a pretty fantastic production that I have very few complaints. And overall, I'm very happy with the look of it. And even if you wanted it to look exactly like the board game, the way the UI is designed, how you can undo actions, how it shows you what actions you can do, what cards you can do, and you know what things will potentially score at the end of the round, all the information you could want is right there. And once you kind of get used to it, pretty easy to access and understand. I will say about the AI, it's okay. Uh, right now, I don't know if they're planning on doing more levels of AI. In general, yes, I do win the game against the computer when I play against the computer. However, I have played some terrible board game apps. There are board game apps that use the, um, so I could ship right now if I want, I don't know, I but, and then, yeah, so I don't know. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not gonna finish this game, I'm just gonna play it around as I'm talking. So as um, AIs go, and yeah, you can kind of see how this works here. So it'll show you show me all the options where I can, and it'll let me choose do I want to export to the Ford market or to mine. So I'm gonna export to mine, obviously. And then, yeah, go ahead with it. And then those will flip over. So the, um, the AI is good. It is, it is better than some games. There are some games that flub dice rolls to make the computer seem better. There are games that just have unbelievably bad AIs. I don't think uh, I have lost the AI yet, but there have been some decent games. So not amazing, but a lot better than a lot of other AI board games. So overall, decent AI. Um, you know, it'd be nice if maybe there were some options or whatever, but decent enough for as complex as this game is. Really great UI, a look that you may or may not like that I personally like, and all the things you would expect. You know, you can play online, you can undo actions, and overall, you know, a really solid app. So if you like Brass, I can definitely highly, highly recommend it's worth the seven bucks, especially if you have other people that you do like to play with online, or if you're just looking to hone your skills before you, you know, get in an actual game of it with real players. So overall, well done on the app on Brass. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll be back with more app reviews soon. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll talk to you guys again soon. All right, bye.